Hello. So in this episode, we are going to go through creating barcodes and uh, QR codes in a Ruby on Rails application. Now, QR codes are used usually to uh, go to a link on the web and barcodes are used to identify a product. And we're going to do both now. And it's quite easy thanks to the gems a QR code and the gem Bobby. Now here is a case. We have a list of posts and we want to generate uh, a QR code and a barcode for each post and store them in our application. So we are going to use active storage for that. Now we are going to start with the QR codes. So let's have a look at the documentation. Uh, basically, we are going to install the gem RQR code. So we will say bundle add RQR code. This way it will be added to our gem file and bundled. Okay, and now we can already uh, generate a QR code. So let's try. We will go to our console and uh, say require a QR code and generate a QR code for this uh, website, for example. Okay, let's say require a QR code, generate a QR code, and let's display it. We'll say QR. So uh, here it is, and we'll uh, display it as a string. So we'll say puts QR to S. So here is the QR, but it isn't quite readable. Well, we see some basic uh, QR stuff like these uh, squares on the sides, but again, it's not uh, really readable and it is not a PNG image, for example. It's just a stream that is displayed in a console. So we want to save it uh, and uh, display it somewhere as, a, uh, as an image. How can we do this? Well, uh, there is this option as SVG or SPNG. So what if we want to save it as a PNG? Well, for this, we would need uh, this external dependency, chunky PNG. And I think it actually comes pre-installed with RQR code. Uh, anyway, I will say bundle add the chunky PNG because uh, Bobby doesn't have it uh, as a dependency by default. So we're going to also say bundle add chunky PNG. Okay, going out and saying bundle add chunky PNG. So uh, it should be also added here. Okay. And now let's try to generate a PNG. So here is the code. We require a QR code. Then we generate the QR code. And then we generate a PNG based on this QR code. Okay, so let's try. Rails console, generate QR code, then we generate a PNG. Okay, so if we type PNG, well, here it is again, it isn't readable yet. So how do we make it readable? Well, we can save it in our local storage. So we can say something like IO, bin write, to our temp folder and a name for the file. And uh, the file is going to be this PNG 2S. Okay, let's see if it works. IO, bin write. Now did it work? Let's have a look at our TMP folder. No, it looks like it didn't work. I will uh, possibly remove this slash. And here we've generated a file. Let's have a look at this file. Okay, here is a file. Looks uh, good. Now let's uh, actually see if uh, it works. I will try to save it uh, locally. So I will uh, download it. And here is some kind of online tool that can uh, decode uh, a QR code. I'll just take it. Okay, submit query. And here is the past result. So here is the URL. Okay, it seems to be working. Now let's uh, try to actually make it work for an image inside our application. So uh, let's go uh, maybe to our app, models, post.rb. And uh, yeah, we'll want to save these uh, images inside our storage as active storage and attach them to our post. So for this, we will need to use uh, active storage. So we will say uh, Rails active storage install. Okay, we've created a migration. Now let's go to DP. 
migrate. Here is the active storage migration. I will say Rails db migrate. Okay. And now we can say uh, post has one attached uh, barcode or actually QR code. Okay. And uh, we are going to have a method to generate uh, a QR code. So let's say after create do uh, or actually after create uh, generate QR code and we'll say def uh, generate QR and here we're going to have the code. So uh, the URL should be the URL of this uh, post. So what would the URL of the post be? For this, we would need to use a URL helper. Let's first see if uh, we can generate a URL that we like. Let's say URL four, and we will say controller will be posts, then uh, action will be show, then the ID will be the ID of this post, so self.id. And uh, what else uh, do we want to say? We would say only path false, I guess. And uh, we would say that we want to have a base uh, URL. So host. Host will be the name of your main application. So for example, superrails.com. Okay. And we can actually add some kind of uh, params that we like. So uh, let's say uh, uh, source would be like uh, uh, from QR. So it would be visible in the URL when somebody opens uh, our post show page through our QR. This uh, from your QR would be added to the URL. Let's see if uh, this works. So when I uh, try to just display generate QR inside our post, then we should have a link to the post and with the source from QR. Let's see if it works. I'll just go to our posts, start the server, views, posts, index, and somewhere here I will say uh, uh, post dot generate QR. And this will just give us uh, the URL, hopefully. Okay, expecting a closed gap. Let's see. Yeah, I forgot a comma here. Okay, we have an undefined method URL for. It is because inside our models, we are not by default uh, uh, using our URL uh, helper. So we want to use this URL helper in our uh, model. And for this, we would say something like uh, include. Uh, rails dot application dot uh, roots dot url helpers okay let's try once again okay and here we have the kind of url that we will be generating for each post so we have the uh, link to the application uh, we have the ID of the post and we have uh, some additional params like source from QR so that we can actually track uh, how many visits have been from the QR. Okay, this is the URL for each of the posts. And uh, now we want to generate a QR based on this URL. So here's the first step. We generate a URL. Let's say QR URL equals URL4 and so on, okay? And now how do we generate a QR code? We will say require a QR code. So also here. And here is the code to generate a QR code, for example, okay? So uh, next we will have QR code equals a QR code new. And here we will have our generated URL, so QR url okay so here we generate the qr code let's see what happens if we just refresh this page okay here is the kind of generated qr code looks uh, terrible let's uh, keep on so next we are going to generate a png 
let's generate the PNG. PNG will be this QR code as PNG. And again, we have all these default uh, options. You are free to explore them, change the colors, change the sizes, and so on. So now we generate a PNG. Let's see what happens. OK, here is the PNG, but it is not uh, readable yet. So now we are going to try to save this PNG in our uh, temp storage. So how would we do it? We would say something like IO, bin write, and so on. Let's see how we can do it. I would say IO, bin write, then TMP, and the name of this uh, particular PNG. So each of them will have a unique uh, name. Let's uh, provide it a unique name. Let's say image name equals secure random dot hex. And we will write to the image name as image name dot png and png to s. Okay, so uh, now in theory, when we call uh, generate QR, we should uh, generate uh, an image and write it to the temp folder of uh, our application for each of the posts. Now, uh, I think if I refresh, it will actually take some time. And uh, what has happened? You see, we've generated all these uh, PNG images. So each post has uh, its unique uh, QR code. You see, they're different. OK. And uh, again, we just see the blob IDs or whatever here. So it's not what we want. We've just generated the QR codes in our temp folder. And now we want to save them inside the active storage and assign them to our post. So to assign a, a file to our post, we would run something like uh, self.generateQR, no, self.QR uh, code. Yeah, we're keeping it in the QR code, dot attach. And we're going to uh, reference one of these files. But uh, this file has to first be saved in our application storage. So this will be like the storage of the application itself, not the temp uh, storage. You see, we have the temp folder and we have the storage folder. Now, the storage folder will usually be your AWS S3 storage or any cloud provider storage that you've got. So first, we are going to save this image uh, from our temp to the cloud, to our active storage, and then assign the blob to our uh, post. So we are going to assign a blob. And based on this, we are going to create a blob. So we'll say blob equals active storage. And uh, the command would be something like uh, uh, blob. So active storage blob uh, create after upload. And inside we would have some uh, params. So IO is the file itself. So we would say file dot open and we are going to reference one of these files. So it would be something like uh, uh, TMP and then we're going to have the image name. So image name dot PNG. You see, this is going to be this uh, image. Okay, then we're going to have the file name. Again, it's going to be the image name and we're going to have the content type that is going to be PNG. Okay, something like uh, this. So we are creating the blob and attaching it. And here instead we're going to display the QR code. So let's see if it works. I will uh, refresh. And you see we have this active storage uh, attached one. So let's see if it's actually attached. QR code dot attached. It will give us a true or a false. And it says false. Now, why is it so? Because uh, we are going to run this command, generate QR after create. So let's try to create a new post. Let's say new post uh, with a QR, create post. 
now we'll go to posts and you see here we have true so it has something attached so now we can actually try to display the qr code we would say an image tag inside we're going to have the post qr code and we will display it if a post has an attached qr code okay let's see and here for this post we have a qr code now let's see if it works i will uh, save the image and it would be like for the post number 11 let's uh, try to decode it so i'm going to go to browse i'm going to go to this uh, qr code submit query and here it is it works so we've managed to generate uh, a qr code for this uh, particular post looks good but uh, not good enough again here we have this giant uh, method of generating a qr code that is sitting inside our post.rb and uh, it's not uh, basically great to have it inside our post.rb. So this is like a one giant single responsibility action that could potentially be used not only for our posts, but for other stuff. So um, it would make sense to move it somewhere else out of our model. And I think the perfect uh, place would be a service uh, object. So we can create uh, basically Ruby objects inside the additional folder inside the, our app folder. So let's uh, try to move this logic out of our post model. So I'm going to go out and say make a directory app slash services. Here's the new directory and inside they're going to have uh, two files. So echo uh, app slash services slash application service dot rb and another one is going to be something like uh, generate qr so generate qr okay here we have the files and uh, now we are just going to do some setup for these uh, service objects so here we're going to say class application service and uh, inside we will have uh, def uh, self dot call then args and uh, block now if you want to learn more about uh, service objects and this specific setup why it works like this uh, you can uh, have a look at some kind of uh, rubicon talks and so on but basically um, this application service and this uh, method that i'm writing now is just saying that uh, we are going to be able to have a method like def call inside our services and uh, inside our post or wherever, I'm just going to say something like generate qr.call and we're going to pass in the object. So it's going to be self. Okay, anyway, going back, new args and block and dot .call. Okay, I guess something like this. And here inside our uh, generate QR service, we're going to say class generate QR that inherits from application service and and we're going to have an at the reader uh, post and we'll say def initialize so post and we'll say at post equals post and 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 now we can have this uh, call method inside and uh, move all our logic from our post RB into this generate QR call method. So let's take uh, all this logic for getting the QR URL, uh, generating a QR code, generating an image, uh, generating an image name, saving the image to local storage, uh, creating an active storage blob and assigning the blob to our particular post let's take all this logic out and put it inside this uh, call method right here okay and uh, we will also move these helpers like require a qr code and require 
uh, and include Rails application roots URL helper, we'll also move this into this generate QR. So we'll put it somewhere here above our call method. Okay, so uh, what should happen? You see, we've really cleaned up our post.rb and uh, moved our generate QR code into a service. And the cool thing about services that they are kind of executables. So we just pass in some params and they execute uh, some logic. And the cool uh, thing the like ideal usage of all services are that they should be like single responsibility. So one service does one thing from your business uh, logic. Okay, so let's uh, see if it works. Now I will uh, actually delete everything we have at the moment. So I'll say Rails DB reset. And if I reset the database, in theory, whenever the posts are created, so I already have some seeds here. Let's see. I'll go to seeds.rb. You see, I seed the post 10 times. So when I seed the database, this uh, after create callback should fire the generate QR service and an active storage blob should be assigned to each of the posts. So each post should have a QR code. Let's see, I will say Rails to be reset. Okay, we get undefined method ID. Let's see. Let's uh, see, what do we mean by undefined method ID? So we say self.id, uh, okay, yeah. We're just going to have replaced the self with the post here. I'll say post ID and post your code. Do we have the self uh, anywhere else here? No, we don't. Okay, again, I will say Rails to be reset. Okay, and you see a lot of files were created in our storage and even more are in our temp folder. Now, if I go to the Rails server, let me refresh. Okay, I will first log in. I'll create an account. Okay, and you see each of our posts has a unique QR code. So looks like the generation was actually quite successful. Now each of our posts has a QR code. And what did it do? We've uh, added this uh, method generate QR in our post.rb and all the logic, the whole heart of the process is in this service. Okay, and we can actually have a look at our active storage. Let's say Rails concern or oh, Rails console and say active storage blob dot count. So you see we have 10 uh, objects saved in our storage and uh, one for each of our posts. So seems to be working well. Now let's try to do the same, but for QR, oh, for barcodes. So for barcodes, we have this gem named Barbie. Let's uh, install this gem. I'll say bundle add Barbie. Okay. And uh, here's the code. So we would require Barbie and then generate the barcode for, well, any string that you would like. So I know this could be the URL of your post or it could be uh, like the ID of the post. Uh, well, usually it is some kind of like a unique ID. So it would be just some kind of uh, hex uh, or slug that references uh, uh, one of the products in your database. So let's uh, just try to see how it works in the console first of all i'll say rails console okay require barbie and create the barcode i'll say barcode yeah so not showing us much yet and let's try to display it as an image or something now here we have these outputters so let's have a look at these Barbie outputters. Okay. So we will look at PNG. So we will require Barbie outputter, PNG outputter. Next, uh, 
we will create a blob for the barcode. Here it is. And we can well open this as a file. So if we run this command file open barcode.png, you see it was actually saved in the root folder of our application. Now this is far from perfect, but uh, here we have a barcode. And now we can apply a similar logic as we did for QR codes for generating the barcodes. Okay, now let's actually first try deleting all this uh, clutter. So I would say something like Rails, uh, TMP, clear. Will it work or will it not? Or TMP dump. Okay, anyway, I'm sure that there is a command. I just don't remember how to remove all this uh, rubbish from our TMP folder. I will now try to just do the same command as we did with our uh, PNGs, but save it inside the TMP, but not the root folder of our application. I will say Rails console and uh, go back to Bobby, run these commands. Then go to outputters, create the blob. Okay, here is the blob. And I will save this blob to our uh, TMP folder. So I will say image name secure random to hex. And I will generate an image. But here, well, we had this blob road, so I'm going to use blob.2s. Okay, here we've generated a PNG. So now we generate in the well, right folder in our TMP. And based on this, we can create the uh, barcode. Based on this, we can create yeah, the barcode. Okay, so um, let's, uh, well, for example, create a new service. Uh, uh, to create a barcode. I will go to our services and say new file generate a barcode dot rb. Okay, now I will just copy everything from here and some lines are going to be uh, modified. So what will uh, the barcode uh, code be? It doesn't have to be a URL. It can be, for example, any random string. What if we just put the title of the post as an example? Let's uh, try that. So I will add these lines, require Bobby. Will not need to require our QR code. And here it will be generate barcode. Okay. And we'll have this barcode equals Bobby. And we'll have some kind of uh, uh, string here. So this can be something like uh, uh, post.title, for example. OK. And next, we are going to require this output a PNG outputter. So we'll put it here. And we are going to generate this blob and display this blob. So here we generate the barcode, then we generate the, uh, let's say, image. I am removing this code. Okay, we'll have an image name. And we will uh, put this image here. Or we can say just PNG to have the same kind of naming. Okay, so we generate the barcode, we generate the PNG from the barcode, we give it a name and we save it inside our TMP folder and then we save it uh, as a blob. And we will then attach it to our post, but not as a QR code, but as a barcode. So we will say has one attached to barcode. Okay, so we'll say post.barcode attach blob. Okay. And now let's uh, say that when we create a post, we are going to generate a QR and generate a barcode, okay? 
and we will display both. So image tag post QR code and post.barcode. Just like this. Now let's uh, restart. So Rails DB reset. And now all the posts are going to be recreated and each post should have both a QR code and a barcode. Okay, you see a lot of additional files were added to our storage. Well, actually it was recreated. Let's run the Rails server. I'll refresh. Okay, again, I will log in because I've reset the database and let's see. Now it looks like the images are still loading, but hey, here they are. So each post has a unique QR code and a unique uh, barcode. So it looks like we have accomplished our mission. Now let's just create a new post uh, with both QR and barcode. We create a post and you see it was given a QR code and a barcode. So looks great. And just for the final touch, let's uh, download this barcode and try to decode the name. So I will save it. I'm saving the barcode. Now I'll go to this random online tool and you see it can uh, decode QR codes and uh, also barcodes. So you see this code one to eight and the kind of encoding we did for our barcode is this code one to eight. So it should possibly be able to decode it. So I'm going to take this barcode, submit query, and you see the past result is with both QR and barcode. So it is the post uh, title, just as we expected. So that's it. And basically in this episode, we went through creating uh, QR codes, creating barcodes, using service objects, and a bit of active storage. So thanks for being with me and have a great time coding.